One is the uh, junction rule, and that is all the current that enters a point leaves a point. All right, so when current enters a point, so let's say we've got I1 coming in this way right here, it's going to split at this junction and make I2 and I3. So I2 comes from up top here, I3 around the bottom, and when they get back together they make the same exact I1. Now here the um, underlying conservation law is the conservation of charge. Because current is Q over T, so you'll have part of a Q, so I'll call it Q prime over T, and this would be Q minus Q prime over T down there. And then when they get back together, you would just have Q over T. Current is charge per time. We don't lose any charge, conservation of charge. Cannot create or destroy matter, energy, charge is matter ish. Okay, so then what you'll do is you'll write an equation for one of the junctions. So in this case, I wrote an equation I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, and that is like the equation for the junction. All right, the second rule is the loop rule, and that the sum of the potential differences along one complete loop is zero. So what I've done here to kind of show that is... Uh, this circuit here, we've got a battery and we have three resistors. And so that's one complete loop all the way around. And this is super simple, but just try to get the idea across. So um, what's the total resistance of this entire circuit? It's 10 ohms. So the equivalent resistance for this guy is 10 ohms. And if V is equal to IR, then 10 is equal to I times 10. So the current through the circuit should be one amp. So if I go back in and draw that, I have one amp leaving the battery, one amp flowing through the two ohm resistor, one amp flowing through the three ohm resistor, and one amp flowing through the five ohm resistor. <coughs> Now, because the sum of the potential differences along the one loop is zero, this is a version of the conservation of energy. Whoops, forgot why. There we go. The conservation of energy. So think about it. When you go through the battery, it gains joules per coulomb. So when a volt is a joule per coulomb. You go up the stairs, you gain potential energy, you go through the battery. As you go through the resistor, you lose some joules per coulomb, and you lose some more joules per coulomb, and you lose some more joules per coulomb until you're back to where you started from. Just like when you go up the ladder, you slide down, 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 back to the beginning, um, using that analogy. Now, equation-wise, the sum of the voltages should be zero, which makes... Um, in this case, we gain 10 through the battery. We lose I times R across each resistor. So that would be 2 volts across here, 3 volts here, and 5 volts there. So we gain 10 through the battery. We lose 2 volts through the 2 ohm resistor. We lose 3 through the 3 ohm resistor. And we lose 5 through the 5 ohm resistor. All right, so let's look at this really simple little circuit. This is how um, this loop rule can be helpful. You've got a 16 volt battery right here. It's kind of ugly, sorry. And then this is a four ohm resistor. This is an unknown resistor. And this is an ammeter and it's measuring two amps. So the current through each resistor would be two amps because it's in series with the uh, ammeter. So now we can write a loop rule. All right, so let's sum up the voltage. We've got a six volt through the battery. Then we lose eight volts across the four ohm resistor. And then the loss across the unknown resistor would be two R and that'll equal zero. So then the unknown resistance would be four ohms.